Welcome friends, family, new friends, haters, and everyone in between. I'm Andrew Hall and this is The Informed. Tonight, we're going to be looking at the propaganda machine. That's right, the media and how they present information to us, the public, and how we work out what's truth and what's fake news. We're also going to take a look at some of the major articles on social media this week that caught my eye. And then we're going to dig a little bit deeper into polio. Looking forward to that. Firstly though, I want to share with you a little bit about my journey with discernment and seeking truth so far in my life. But before we do that, I'm just going to show you a short video featuring a guy by the name of Dr. Walter Martin. He was a, an author and biblical uh, scholar who looked into the validity of different faiths and different religions different denominations to see if they were biblical. Uh, he looks at the Seventh-day Adventist Church and that is the church that I belong to before coming out of based on doctrine. Check it out. It's an old one but it's a good one and I'm sure some of you will have questions as to what it's all about. I will try and explain after and uh, hopefully we can come to some sort of uh, knowledge of my experience in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Check this one out. White was a Christian, but she got into the idea of being the voice of prophecy to her own denomination. And she claimed that God gave her revelations, which we now know God did not give her. She plagiarized them from other people, shamelessly, I might add. And they are trying to defend her on the grounds that the Bible was put together from various sources, so therefore Mrs. White was doing nothing the Bible writers were doing. That's absolute nonsense. The Bible writers didn't plagiarize from other people and published works and things of that nature and pass it off as divine revelation. Mrs. White did that, and to that degree she was uttering false prophecies. Walter, when you, uh, many uh, years ago, you took a stand and simply said that the Seventh-day Adventists were not a cult. And... Uh, uh, then through the years, it seemed like um, they've taken, taken some harder stands. And uh, I'd like to know how you look at that situation right now. I'm in dialogue now with the General Conference of Seventh-day Adventists over questions I am asking them. What are, the, in your terms, the crucial points and how they answer them that make the difference? Whether or not they consider Ellen G. White uh, to uh, actually be the infallible interpreter of Scripture. I want a statement on that from them. The reason I want it is because if they say yes, then she is above Scripture. Uh, if they say no, then why all the fuss about the plagiarism and everything else? Why don't they either fish or cut bait? That, I think, is an important okay. question. Let me ask you a tough one. Many of the critics back then said that uh, some of the friends that you had at the top echelons that gave you the answer last time, I think it was on questions on doctrine, yes. that uh, what they said, the guys down below didn't hold. Did you feel any of that kind of heat? Oh, I got a lot of heat on the subject, but what encouraged me was the fact that I met many Adventists, thousands of them around the world, who came to me personally and thanked me for telling the truth because it was their faith. Okay, now Des Ford and Walter Ray were our guests on the program, and they uh, uh, talked about the fact that from uh, the scriptures they could not support the 1844 doctrine. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, because of that, it seemed like Des Ford had his teaching credentials uh, taken away. Oh, yes, definitely. There's a purge. Okay. I met with Des and I talked to him. He's a very great, uh, a great guy and a very fine Bible student. And he's forsaken Adventism and Mrs. White on the grounds that uh, he doesn't have any choice. And Walter Ray also came yeah. out on, on the book on well, L.G. White, White lies, and he's been dismissed. Yeah. Uh, is that why you see you're asking the questions? I'm asking the questions because I see the Adventists purging their own numbers of people whose theology is essentially sound and I want to know why. So that was Walter Martin talking about the Seventh-day Adventist Church and its founder, Ellen G. White, uh, who based uh, a lot of the uh, founding beliefs on her visions that she apparently, allegedly received from God, which we now know that she plagiarized all of them, uh, which is, is one of those things that beggars uh, belief, and you've got to ask yourself the question, how did we not pick up on this earlier? Well, it's, it's funny when you control the power and control uh, the interpretation or the understanding of, of uh, what's being taught, uh, it is difficult to see it, especially when you're in it from birth, and that's what I was. So, Abbott, I was a seven-day Adventist. I'll never, ever forget the first time I started looking at the information that rocked my world. It was uh, in the middle of 2003, 
and I was finding information on the internet. Back then we had dial-up <laughs> and it was very slow uh, and I would get on of a night time and start researching uh, the Seven Day Adventist Beliefs and some of the accusations that people were making about Seven Day Adventist Beliefs. And to say that I was happy with what I was reading, I wasn't. I was actually getting quite angry. I was feeling like they were wrong. I was feeling like what I believed in was still completely 100% true. And um, I would get really angry and switch off the computer and then not look at it again for another couple of days. But I felt like it was my duty to look into this because I had people in my life who were sharing this and I felt like they needed answers. I needed really good answers and I couldn't just say, well, that's what I've always thought and that's what I've always believed and that's, that's what I've always been taught, uh, so therefore it must be right. I felt like I needed to have good, solid answers. So I kept looking and kept searching and kept comparing with the Bible. And I, I got so frustrated at one point that I, I thought, look, I think the best way to do this is actually to go back to the original writings of the founders of our Seventh-day Adventist Church and beliefs and, and look at what they actually said and then physically compare it side by side with what the Bible had to say because I believed that what uh, I, I believed as a Seventh-day Adventist was 100% biblically true and so therefore if I held the Bible up next to my beliefs they should be one and the same. So I did that. I looked at one of the very, very first visions of one of the founders and I compared it with a passage of scripture. Well, that opened up a massive can of worms because what I realized instantly, the moment I did that, was that the vision did not line up with what the Bible had to say. It actually contradicted it massively. And that moment was like a light bulb moment. It was the moment when the veil was ripped from my eyes and I started to see that what I'd always believed in wasn't necessarily true. And I thought to myself, well, if this is not true, then what else is not true? And so then I started going down the rabbit hole. And I always say this to my friends who are still sevies, if you do go start to go on that journey searching for truth, just be prepared, like Neo in the Matrix, once you take that pill, uh, ignorance is bliss, baby, <laughs> because you have to make decisions based on what you know. And I and couldn't, I couldn't in good conscience, uh, continue to be a seven-day Venus with what I knew. I thought for a while that I could share my beliefs and share the truth with others and change the church, but I realized pretty quickly that that wasn't going to happen. Uh, so I was confronted with the very real problem that I had to give up everything, uh, everything that I knew and loved, uh, all my friendships, uh, my my comfortable summer camp living, which I did every year. I'd go out summer camps and do plays and play in bands and have enormous amounts of fun. It was great. Uh, but I, I couldn't in good conscious, conscience continue to be long and support a church that I believed was not um, biblical. So, so that was tough. And, and, and I suppose that is probably where it's led me on my journey of discernment and searching for truth. And that now, when I look at either faith or, or any belief system, I really do think you need to uh, ask really good questions and make sure that the answers are true. Because when I started questioning my belief systems, um, initially my friends and family said, well, you probably can't understand that because you're not a minister and you're not a trained theologian, so therefore you need to go and ask a theologian. Now, I can't help but think the similarities between that and what's going on today in the vaccine war, uh, when people ask questions and, you know, about science or about medicine or about vaccines, 
uh, people say instantly, well, what's your, what's your credentials? Uh, what's, what's your history? What's your background? Do you have a job that is able to understand this? And we're told to go to doctors, we're told to go to scientists, researchers who actually done all the study. Uh, I'm sorry, that's exactly the same as what I was getting when I was a seven day Venice. You can't trust what you are reading because you can't understand it. You're not smart enough. Oh, that's ridiculous. You know, we've got a brain, I've got a brain, I can read, you can read, you can work out what's right and what's wrong. Look, I can't help but think this is very, very similar to, to when I'm teaching kids at school and I'm asking them to learn comprehension. We ask children to learn the skills that they uh, need, to requ need to acquire to be able to work out what something is saying, whether or not it's accurate, whether or not uh, there is truth in what they are reading. How do they find the answers? They have special means and ways to go about doing it. We're asking people to make a decision based on what? Based on their understanding of the evidence. And if we are not smart enough to understand what is in the vaccine inserts and the ingredients or what is in a set of beliefs and whether or not it lines up with the Bible, then I really think that they're making it too hard for us to understand. It should be made simple so that people can understand it. But I actually believe that what's in the Bible, a child can understand it, let alone an adult can easily understand what's going on. You don't need a theology degree. And the same can be said for vaccines. We are not dumb. We can work out what is bad and what is not. And if we don't understand it, we can look somewhere else and find more information and find out whether that level of aluminium adjuvant is poisonous or not, all right? So we can, we can work it out. We're not stupid, right? Um, so before we go any further, uh, I just really wanted to make sure that you understood a little bit about where I've come from and what I'm continuing to do in my everyday life, but discernment and truth are like probably the most important things that I think we can have. Now, when I'm looking at TV, and this is when I'm watching media and, 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 and getting my daily dose of news, uh, I can't help but think that we are being led astray. We're being led in a direction uh, that the person who is in control of the media is wanting us to go. So if we go and have a look at this link that I posted on The Informed during the week, you'll notice that uh, I'm sure you've seen this before, this stupid How Vaccines Cause Autism link. It, you click on it and it takes you to another site which says they don't. And it's got streamers and everything flying down. This sort of crass, humorous joke that people on Facebook make, friends of mine, uh, acquaintances, anyone uh, with no brain, <laughs> drives me nuts. And it's this sort of humor that is not helpful for the whole thing. Let's take a look at uh, some comedic responses, especially from Jimmy Kimmel. Let's have a look at him. Another right area in which I, I, I feel like we're headed in the wrong direction. I want to get serious for a minute, if I could, because I've been hearing a lot of talk lately, and I don't know if this is more prevalent in uh, L.A. than other places, but I feel like it probably is, but there's a small but still sizable group of people who are choosing not to vaccinate their children. Here in L.A., there are schools in which 20% of the students aren't vaccinated because uh, parents here are more scared of gluten than they are of smallpox. <laughs> and uh, as a result, we now have measles again. We've got measles. I want to say something about that. I know if you're one of these anti-vaccine people, you probably aren't going to take medical advice from a talk show host, and I don't expect you to. I wouldn't either. But I would expect you to take medical advice from almost every doctor in the world. <laughs> See, the thing about doctors is they didn't learn about the human body from their friend's Facebook page. They went to <laughs> medical school where they studied all sorts of amazing things, like how to magically prevent children from contracting horrible diseases by giving them a uh, little shot. You know those little shots of Botox? Which is botulism, by the way. <laughs> you get in your face to make your head look smooth and your eyes look crazy? <laughs> a little shot like that and poof, polio is gone. But. <laughs> 
Some people do not buy into that because they did a Google search and Jenny McCarthy popped up and she had clothes on, so they listened to what she had to say and decided not to vaccinate their kids. Now, and by the way, I want to say, this would all be okay if your kids were the only ones affected. It, they're your kids, but they're not because unvaccinated kids put all children in danger, especially babies who are too young to get the vaccination shot. But of course, that's according to doctors, so, you know, <laughs> take that with a grain of salt. Now, some people are saying kids who aren't vaccinated shouldn't be allowed to go to school or daycare or uh, go to public places, but I don't... Here's where I think it should go. If you are one of those people who knows more than doctors, that's fine, no vaccinations, but you're not allowed to go to the doctor anymore. Okay? <laughs> Why would you even want to go to a doctor who knows less than you do? <laughs> so, if you fall and you cut your head open, you will not be admitted to the emergency room. <laughs> Stay at home, find that sewing kit you stole from the Marriott, <laughs> and stitch it up yourself, Doc. As the doctor. And Jimmy, I wish we could say it was a laughing matter, but it's just not. I find this sort of humour absolutely disgusting and very offensive, especially to all those uh, poor, genuine people who've had terrible things happen to them because of vaccines. They've either had their uh, children permanently injured, or worse, they have died because of the vaccines. I'm sure that if you had this happen to you, Jimmy, you would not be making these jokes. You would not be saying these things about vaccines and about the people who uh, ask questions about vaccines. I'm sure that if you did have this happen to, to you, you'd actually be on this side of the camera with me asking the questions that I am. Because I'm starting to realise that the way that the pro side go about things is absolutely disgusting. If you truly do have the truth, you have no need to make fun of poor, innocent people who've been hurt by these medical uh, procedures. And we need to start actually looking for the truth rather than making fun of other people. And look, some of the things that he brought up, especially herd immunity, is something that we really need to ask the question about. Is herd immunity true? Is her herd immunity real? If herd immunity was real, we would find that we've never had herd immunity. Most of the adults in Australia at the moment and America are not up to date with their vaccines, right? Now, if herd immunity really comes from vaccinations, which it doesn't even to begin with, but if it really did, then herd immunity would never have been reached because of the adult population. I saw a few months ago on Channel 7, they were doing a report on vaccination levels in Queensland. And uh, what they said was that certain suburbs had vaccination rates of 95%. What they failed to mention was that these percentages were to do with the children. They had nothing to do with the adult population, so therefore the percentage would have been way lower than what they were reporting. This is false, fake news. I cannot believe that we sit here and then repeat things like Jimmy Kimmel about herd immunity saying, well, you know, we don't want to make, we want to make sure that our unvaccinated uh, or our, our, our children are safe because of the unvaccinated ones coming in. Like, it's just ridiculous. It's not even in, found in any, in any science. It's not found in any truth. It is just blatant lies being repeated by people who don't know. Uh, herd immunity, if we really look into what herd immunity is, we would discover that it was first uh, discovered when a group, of, a population of people became sick with the wild version of the virus, of the disease, got better, got lifetime immunity, and that threshold was 60%. The rest of the population then were safe. It didn't spread. That's herd immunity, and it's only created in a natural way. It is not, it is not derived from vaccinations. The vaccine movement took that idea and then applied it to vaccinations. Uh, it started off at a certain percentage, and then over the years it's got higher and higher and higher. 
The question that you have to ask is, if herd immunity was attained at that first percentage, why has it gone up all these years? Why has it continued to get higher and higher and higher? In some places now they're saying that we need nearly 100% herd immunity to stop these diseases. Well, I'm sorry, if you look at some of the current news reports all over the media, you will find that that is not the case. We are having if we, even if we have full vaccinations, we're still getting sick. There are still children, there's still part of the population getting sick because the vaccine is causing the very disease that is claiming to stop. It's unbelievable. Uh, I watched another one, uh, which uh, another short video the other day, uh, uh, Penn and Teller, I think they're called. Um, look, they were making fun, and I'll just describe this because there was lots of swearing. Uh, they were making fun of the whole idea of what happens when vaccines came into the world and they had one uh, lot of 10 pins and they had a glass uh, wall with vaccines written on it. And then they had another field of 10 pins with no glass wall and they picked up balls. <coughs> Excuse me. And they picked up balls and then threw them at the population. Now, every time the ball hit the vaccine wall, it bounced off and the population was protected. Every time the wall got thrown at the unvaccinated population, obviously it knocked down pins. What is this sending? What message is this sending to everyone out there? It is sending the message that you are 100% safe from the disease. This is stupid junk science. This is not the truth. Vaccines do not protect you 100%. They are not safe. They can give you the disease and they're failing everywhere all throughout the world. Now the article that we've got to look at is in the Courier Mail. It's entitled Polio Fears as Vaccination Rates Plunge Across Southeast Queensland. Now this article in the Courier Mail, I've, uh, <laughs> I've got to tell you, I had to laugh a little bit because it is unbelievable how they're playing on people's fear of diseases, especially polio. And, and look, it's not a laughing matter. I do realise that there have been people injured from polio and it's terrible. It really is tragic. But the way the media tries to scare the public into going and getting their vaccinations, it's just unbelievable. Uh, this has all come from uh, a recent outbreak in Papua New Guinea and the article cites that. The article says uh, you know what's going on in Papua New Guinea uh, we don't want that to spread to Australia especially Queensland and when you look at the vaccination rates in Queensland they're all low so therefore herd immunity doesn't e exist in in some suburbs in Queensland and therefore look out polio could strike and we could have a devastating uh, consequence uh, it could spread like wildfire all these emotive, uh, in uh, <laughs> over enthusiastic uh, ways of saying things to try and get you uh, worried about the spread of polio. And to be honest, polio is something that we really don't need to worry about here in Australia. Firstly and foremostly, uh, we have a really good sanitation here in Australia. Don't know whether you notice, we've got clean water and we're quite hygienic and we've got good diets. So the chances of it spreading like wildfire are not that likely. Uh, <laughs> However, in the next breath, they do say that you need to go and vaccinate. What they don't tell you is that the Papua New Guinea uh, outbreak of polio is actually derived from the vaccine. That's right, from the vaccine. <laughs> Just, I can't believe that we, the public, are sitting here having to uh, accept this rubbish. We are constantly told to uh, do something about vaccinations. We need to get in and vaccinate. Yet the polio outbreak, which is causing these articles uh, to even be written, is actually caused by the vaccine. Are you joking? Is anyone really thinking with their brain out there? Uh, there was another, uh, another article written as well. Polio peril, ignoring vax, and yes, plunge in jabs, put kids, uh, kids at risk of crippling disease. Well, that's got nothing to do with whether or not polio is putting anyone at risk 
uh, it's the vaccination itself. If we were really looking at the facts, it's vaccinations itself. Um, so with that in mind, I thought I would share uh, some really great information. One of our members on The Informed uh, posted this week. His name's Peter Sun. He's author of a book called uh, The Common Sense Healthy, Wealthy and Wise Handbook for the Skeptics. Uh, he's got five healthy children, all unvaccinated, and uh, he is a great guy. He got in contact with me uh, at the very beginning of uh, when I started The Informed and shared this book with me. Sorry, Pete, I have not read it yet, but I am going to. I actually want to review it on uh, The Informed in, in the next few episodes and hopefully uh, have, a, have an interview with you. So we'll be looking forward to that. But I wanted to share something that Peter actually shared with us and I wanted to read it out loud so uh, you could actually hear it because it's really great and it's all about polio. Uh, so this is what he said. So you may often hear about the great success of vaccines in having polio eradicated. This is a lie. Here's the true story about the deaths and paralysis from the polio vaccine. From the 1800s, the most common pesticides used to treat crops, fruits and vegetables against bugs were those filled with arsenic mixed with lead. It was these poisonous pesticides and later DDT that caused the paralysis and disease called polio, not some mysterious germ or bug. Dr. Ralph Scobie, Dr. Morton Biskind testified in front of the US Congress in 1951 that the paralysis around the country known as polio was being caused by industrial poisons and that a virus theory was purposely fabricated by the chemical industry and the government to deflect litigation away from both parties. This is unbelievable. Unbelievable. And I cannot believe that this has been ignored um, since then. In 1934 and 1935, two polio vaccines were employed in large-scale trials with disastrous results. The vaccines given to 17,000 children in Canada and the US killed six and paralyzed dozens of others. The deaths and paralysis typically involved uh, paralysis in the inoculated arm rather than in the legs as was more normal. So traumatic uh, was this experience to the public uh, and the research establishment that it would take another two decades before another polio vaccine would be brought to market. Tragically, the 1955 vaccine named after its inventor Jonas Salk had an even more disastrous debut. In the rush uh, to mass produ uh, produce this vaccine amid the polio outbreaks of the early 1950s, this vaccine received the quickest federal approval on record. Caution was thrown to the wind and with Salk and the head of the National Institute of Health refusing to heed the warnings, including from other scientists in the field and from a scientist within the NIH itself, the result was that 70,000 afflicted by the polio vaccine, 51 of them left permanently paralyzed, plus five deaths. These afflictions were then followed by an epidemic among the family and friends that uh, these vaccine recipients came into contact with, with a further 113 cases of paralysis, plus five deaths. The polio inoculation program was then in chaos. The U.S. suspended its program less than a month uh, after the first child was vaccinated. The U.K. and Germany abandoned their planned campaigns and Sweden called off production of its own homegrown vaccine. The Salk vaccine, though the problems that led to the disaster were soon corrected, would be displaced by the Sabin vaccine, ironically now viewed as having more uh, having been more dangerous than the Salk vaccine. Because of the Salk vaccine's monumental failure, Salk never received the Nobel Peace Prize and the NIH was censured by a congressional committee. 
Today, polio is hidden under many new names. Polio is an enterovirus. Sound familiar? Recently, there was an outbreak of an illness called the enterovirus 68 or EV68. Uh, not to mention what we're seeing in Papua New Guinea and Indonesia right now. If you really uh, read carefully the symptoms and compare them to polio, they are, are essentially the same. Look up the symptoms of the Guillain-Barre syndrome, GBS, acute flaccid paralysis, uh, viral or aseptic meningitis, chronic fatigue syndrome, and a few other names, all clinically indistinguishable from polio. That's how the medical establishment eradicates diseases with their poisonous vaccines and drugs. They rename them. Here is the source of this fraud. Guess who it is? It's the American Medical Association. And in 1956, instructed each licensed medical doctor that they could no longer classify polio as polio or their license to practice would be terminated. Any paralysis was now to be diagnosed uh, as AFP or acute flaccid paralysis, MS, MD, Bell's palsy, cerebral palsy, uh, Lou Gehrig's disease or Guillain-Barre meningitis. This was orchestrated purposely to make the public believe polio was eradicated by the polio vaccine. But, the, but because the polio vaccine contained toxic ingredients directly linked to paralysis, polio cases, not identified as polio, were skyrocketing, but only in vaccinated areas. Sound familiar? Look at it this way. On the one side, you have the companies making billions of dollars, something we talked about last week. The politicians who are supporting that, they're getting donations from those uh, billion dollar companies. And then the people who are making a living from them, uh, like the doctors, they're getting kickbacks as well from making sure that their vaccination rates are high. And then you have the media who are supporting every single thing in the news and what's on TV and the radio and in newspapers and they're getting advertising money from the vaccine manufacturers. On the other side you have the mums and dads. They were vaccine pro. They believed in the vaccine until their, their children were injured. And this is why I say they're not anti-vaxxers, they are actually ex-vaxxers. People who once believed in the vaccine uh, program, now they don't because they've seen firsthand how bad it is. They saw their perfectly normal, healthy kids die and get severely damaged after vaccines and the odd doctor whose conscience or independent research would not allow them to continue administering these poisons and who are now ostracized and punished by their own industry body, the AMA, which is also getting plenty of money from the vaccine companies. All the universities and researchers doing the independent studies tell you vaccines save lives and are perfectly safe for all children uh, and are basically all funded again by the drug companies. Uh, you've heard the term safe and effective, we hear it all the time. It's simply not true. Any idiot, any fool, who does any kind of research into medical drugs of any kind knows they all have side effects and some people can die or be severely damaged if given drugs um, they are allergic to. So who do you think is really likely to be giving the real facts? If you really think about it, the answer is pretty obvious. Just pause there, I want to I want to touch on that one point that he made uh, earlier on if you have a think about the medical and, and uh, drugs and if you're going to get damaged by them, if you're allergic to them, it's, it's obvious that that's going to happen, right? There are people out there. When we go into a hospital, we get given a form to sign. It's a form of consent. Yes, I want to do the operation. Oh my goodness, it's very risky. Maybe not. That's your decision. That's something that we have all got. It's our right to refuse 
um, medical help if we are able to understand exactly the risks of what is going on. Vaccines, it should not be any different. It's a medical procedure. We are sticking something into our body, into our children's bodies. Why should we do it if we don't believe in it or if we uh, disagree with what uh, the ingredients are and we don't think it's going to uh, be helpful to us, it's going to hurt us, or for the simple fact that we don't want to inject something that has healthy aborted fetus cells in it from babies that were aborted, that were healthy. I cannot believe that Christians who know this turn a blind eye to it. I, I, call me judgy, but I am not going to put something in my body that um, deliberately supports the abortion uh, epidemic that we have in this world. Uh, that's a whole other discussion though and I'm sure some of you feel very strongly about that but as a Christian I believe in life and I don't actually have children myself. I'll tell you what if you don't want to get if you want to get rid of a child just because uh, it's inconvenient or you're not mentally able to keep it, hello more than happy to have your child, uh, would love to have a child. Anyway, that's another story for another time. Well, let's keep going with this, it's a long post. Uh, he also goes on to say, uh, Peter, I love this, this is fantastic, because this is exactly what I've been thinking about all the way along. Did you know that the doctors used to promote cigarettes and the medical associations accepted millions and millions of dollars from uh, the, 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 the companies uh, for them to advertise before people actually woke up to the fact that cigarettes do indeed cause cancer. Now this is not that long ago. We, we've got to remember that history repeats itself over and over again and we would be foolish not to learn from our history. Uh, something that the cigarette companies still deny and continue to sell their product. Medical companies are no different they will deny to the death any side effects and deaths that they cause uh, and will, as will the people administering them. It's up to us, you, the people here on the informed and everyone out there in the public um, to make different choices and to fight this sales propaganda. Wow, what an amazing post. Thank you very much, Peter. Uh, I really, really enjoyed um, that post the other day and I really wanted to share it with everyone here on The Informed just because I felt that uh, it's, it's important to, to know a little bit about the history and all those links that you provided, they're all there on The Informed. If you want to check them, go and have a look for yourself. Uh, I'm more than happy to dig a little deeper and actually I started really uh, researching into polio there is a lot of information out there and this is just scratching the surface so please uh, go and have a look uh, it is really really fascinating stuff and you know when someone says oh what about polio next time you can say uh, well actually I know a little bit about it all right, moving right along, we're going to have a look at some of the top headlines of this week. And the first one that uh, really sort of uh, hit me, because I'm a Christian, is the ongoing issue with uh, Falau and his Christian beliefs and what he said on social media. Look, I know there's a lot of difference of opinion out there, but from a Christian's perspective, we're now starting to look at whether or not he actually quoted the Bible and, and, and the media is actually saying that he uh, hasn't quoted the Bible correctly. I find this hilarious that the media is now an authority on theology and biblical interpretation. But the, the, the uh, post that I saw this week was about uh, a, a, uh, an English football player, uh, sorry, rugby player, uh, Billy uh, Vunapola, uh, and it said, Billy Vunapola backflips on homophobic comments. Now, the reason why I included this today, especially because we're looking at uh, the propaganda machine, is that these headlines that the journalists come up with, they're always completely wrong. Absolutely wrong. When I looked at this headline and I, I saw, I thought, oh, okay, so this guy's come out in support of Flower, and now he's saying he's actually backflipped and he's not, not, not um, talking about it, not, not going to continue believing what he believes. Well, that's not what the article said at all. 
The article actually didn't say anything about him backflipping. He actually uh, said he didn't want to talk about it because he was now concentrating on his campaign at the World Cup. Fair enough. Like, the guy's been uh, hung out to dry. Falao's been booted out of his job. Um, why would he want to continue to talk about it? The one thing he hasn't done is he hasn't removed um, his following or his acceptance of what uh, Falao said. So this idea that he's backflipped is absolutely false. Again, fake news. You just can't believe it. Let's keep going. Uh, then there was another article, at behind viral trend has disturbing terms and conditions. Now if you are on social media, I'm sure you've seen everyone posting their current photo and then their old photo. It's through the media everywhere at the moment. It's crazy. Uh, I nearly did it and then I thought, oh, there's always something about these things that uh, you don't really understand until much, much later. And then we got this article that says, scroll through Facebook, Instagram and Twitter and you'll see everyone from colleagues to celebrities uh, in, in a way you've never seen them before, significantly aged, they're taking part in a viral trend, uh, for a second time swept across the internet, FaceApp invites users to transform your face using artificial intelligence with just one tap. Well, what we're finding out now that the Russian company uh, that has uh, come up with this app actually owns that picture and can do whatever they want from that point on. Nothing's for free, guys. You've got to make sure that if you're doing this, you're happy just to give up your information and your identity. Who knows what they're going to use it for? Anyway, just be careful. Uh, moving right along. Okay, so this other one came up, and look, I am, I did say right from the start that I was interested in talking about uh, climate change and about the environment, and I really am. Uh, this one here, bees declared to be the most important living being on Earth. We've been hearing about it for years. We've been hearing that bees are dying out, and that when they go, there's going to be disastrous, disastrous consequences for us on Earth. So, apparently, they're the most important living being on Earth. Apart from humans, obviously. But it's interesting, again, that, um, that bees are now uh, topping us as being important. I'm sure, I'm sure that we'll work out some way of keeping them. But uh, I am, it is concerning, I've got to say, like, I mean, our planet is dying. Uh, from my personal uh, Christian perspective, I'm not surprised. This is a dying earth. It's not going to last forever. And one day, uh, I believe that God's going to call an end to this world. Um, and, and so it's just part of the course. Uh, can I help the environment? Yeah, sure, absolutely. I do that all the time. I make sure I re recycle. I try to cut down on my emissions. I do everything that I possibly can. But that's only because I want to live in a uh, more toxic-free environment and live the best life that I possibly can. I'm certainly, I don't believe that I'm going to change the fate of the planet because I know that the fate of the planet is in God's hands. But you might disagree with me. I'm more than happy for you to comment after this. All right. This was an interesting one. I uh, saw this and thought, wow, well, all that information about Lyme disease over the years, I wonder if this is true. It says, Pentagon to tell US Congress whether it used weaponized ticks to the public. Well, I'm sure anything is possible. And uh, if they really have, uh, that Lyme disease, it would add up. I mean, they haven't wanted to look into it. They haven't wanted to investigate and to actually classify it as uh, a, an actual illness. They, they much rather say that people were nuts. Um, maybe this is, this is true. This is something that's going on. I would hate to think that the government is doing this sort of thing, but it'll be interesting to see whether or not this plays out any further. Uh, I suppose just watch this space. Okay, moving back into the world of vaccines again, I saw this uh, and hit, look, I think we're going to see more of this. I think we're going to see, it says here, Seattle nurse contracts measles from patient despite being fully vaccinated. Oh my goodness. 
Yes, uh, that's right. Someone who's vaccinated actually got the disease. The vaccines are not working. We are going to continue to see these types of headlines. It's going to happen over and over again. I can't believe that the world isn't starting to wake up and go, what is going on with our pharmaceutical companies? They are producing vaccines that are not working. We've already spoken about uh, in the last few years uh, on 60 Minutes and different uh, current affair programs that antibiotics are starting not to work. Isn't it possible that vaccines could be starting not to work as well? Well, clearly they are not working and uh, I think we're going to see more of this. this is, stay tuned again uh, and keep copying and pasting and posting these, uh, these articles because I think we're going to find that this is going to become more and more the norm. Uh, oh, these stupid, stupid um, <laughs> posts from our media and I saw it on the ABC and someone said it's exactly the same one on, on Channel 7. Uh, it's a, uh, a chance for people to poll, uh, to vote whether or not uh, parents should be fined like they are in Germany $4,000 for not vaccinating their children. This is absolutely disgraceful and uh, this is not going to happen in Australia and we should all be up in arms if we even start to think about it but I cannot believe that Channel 7 and ABC exact same poll makes me wonder are they linked? Uh, you got to ask yourself those questions when you see something come out within the same time frame uh, what's exactly going on? So. Um, if we go a little bit further, we can see actually that, that vote, the no vote actually there was coming right up. It's 46%. I hope that it came out a bit uh, higher towards the end. So, after all of this, discerning the truth is difficult, but it is a worthy pursuit and one that we all should uh, attempt to strengthen. Something that I've loved doing over the years. It's a difficult situation to get yourself into, but you have to do it. Uh, healthy skepticism is a great a asset and one that we should not be ashamed about. This combined with bravery to stand up and speak your mind is what we all should aspire to do. Just take that quote in from Abraham Lincoln for a second. Be sure you put your feet in the right place and then stand firm. Well, that's all we have time for here at The Inform. Remember to ask questions. Don't be afraid of standing for truth and respect each other's opinion. We live in the most beautiful, peaceful country in the world. I love Australia, and Australians are awesome. Be Australian as much as you can, and be proud of it. I will see you next week on The Inform. I'm Andrew Hall. See you then. We have to show these heartless, soulless leaders that we are just not a few to be trodden down underfoot as if we don't exist and have no rights whatsoever. We are Australians and we're aiming for Canberra. We want to get there and with your help we can do it. So spread the word, spread your messages, get your friends to vote, vote, vote. One, for the Involuntary Medication Ejectors Party this election. We need to take our children back. We need to take our country back. We need to take our democracy back. Thank you all very much. I'm not stopping, guys. This is not stopping me. This is only fueling the raging fire within me, and they have just unleashed the dragon. We stand now together in this great state for freedom, for liberty, in the greatest country in the world. We will not let them fall. Thank you. Oh, here are Mississippi. and Catholic will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty.